everyone, welcome back to Soft Look Live. I know we're all eager to meet Brandy, so let's quickly get on to our trivia question for the day. Which Canadian city is, oh, I'm sorry, can you name the highest peak in Canada? Um, let me do that again. Can you name the highest peak in Canada? So let me know the answers in the comments below. You can also share this image and your answer on Instagram with the hashtag Soft Look Live, and we may feature it on our feed. Um, I will re reveal the response at the end of our segment. For now, let's start our show. If you're new here, Self of Live is an interactive YouTube series made to help self of test takers like you understand a little bit more about the self of test. So if you're about to write the test, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to be notified as soon as we go live. If you know somebody else who's about to write the test, please introduce them to our channel. In today's episode, we're discussing task five of the speaking section. This is a much requested task by our audience. Some of you here even may be eager to get onto it. So we'll get right there. As always, ask your questions in the comments and we'll get to it after the lesson. Hello, Brandy, how are you doing today? I am wonderful, Ashwadi. how are you? I'm great. Um, okay, so I'm going to let you get started. Um, I know we already have 20 people here, so why are you going? Perfect. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. So there's a nice, a nice shot of some flowers for everybody here today as we get started. Perfect. So yes, as Ashwadi said, we've had lots of requests from our viewers like yourselves to have some assistance with this speaking task five. It's a bit unusual because there are two parts to this task. So let's get started with that right away. Uh, a couple of things to note, I guess, about speaking in general before we get to our practice question today, though. So there are eight tasks in total on the speaking test for CELPIP. Every single question you deliver here on your test, you're going to have a little bit of time to prepare your answer first and to think about your details before you actually start to speak. And when it does come time to speak, you're not ever going to be facing a human examiner, a human rater. You're going to be speaking out loud and recording your voice into a microphone that you'll be wearing attached to a headset. So the raters will listen to your recordings later on, and that's where the score will come from. So I hope that reassures you just a little bit that when you speak on the test, it's just you in front of the computer. So you'll have your, your thoughts to yourself and hopefully be a little bit less nervous as well. Now, each task on the CELPIP speaking assesses a particular skill that you would use in day-to-day -day communication. So very quickly, you're looking right now at all eight tasks. You can see the, uh, the title, if you will, of each task mentioned here on the screen. We're focusing on task five today, which is all about comparing in the first part and then persuading your listener in the second part. Now, interestingly enough, in part one, where you're just comparing information, you'll notice that you're not actually speaking at all. You're just going to think about your answer to deliver later on. So you do have a full minute to get familiar with the content on the test screen and start to think about ideas. I'd encourage you to take some quick notes during that minute of prep time. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So when that minute is over, you're going to move on automatically to part two of this task. And before you speak, you're actually given a second full minute of preparation time. So you'll be able to continue to add to the notes that you're making. And then when it does come time to speak, you'll be speaking for a full minute. This is a role play. So you'll be speaking as if you're talking to another person. And your whole purpose here is to persuade them to agree with a, a choice that you've made on the test. So I'd like to start off by looking at a real past cell pip test question. This question's no longer live. You'll never see it on a test if you would do one from now into the future. But this was once upon a time a real test question. So it's nice authentic practice. Please don't hurt your eyes by trying to read all this information on the screen. I'll make it bigger for you in just a moment. But I wanted to show you what the entire test screen would look like when you sit down to complete this at your computer station. So I'll draw your attention though at the very top here. This is where the timer is going to count down. So keep an eye there once in a while as you're preparing or speaking. So you know how much time is left. So you'll have 60 seconds. And in that 60 seconds of prep time, what you're going to do is very quickly skim read over the background information here. So I'll make that bigger now so we can all see it with more ease. In fact, I'll read it out loud for all of us just so we can follow it together. 
So this particular question told the speakers that your child's kindergarten teacher wants to involve the children and their parents in decorating the classroom walls. You found two suitable ways to decorate the walls. Using the pictures and information below, choose the option that you prefer. In the next section, you will need to persuade the teacher that your choice is the better choice. If you do not choose an option, the computer will choose one for you. You do not need to speak for this part. Okay, so returning to the test screen now, I'm hoping it will take you about seven or eight seconds to quickly skim read over that background information. So you now understand who you are, the parent, and who you're speaking to. It'll be the classroom teacher. So that's what will happen when you're prompted to speak in the next part. So using the remaining uh, amount of time there for that 60 seconds, you would quickly look at these two choices, the pictures. You can see there's one of a child putting wallpaper up on the kindergarten class wall and one of a child who's painting using latex paint. Very quickly, you're going to skim read the bulleted points beneath each picture. And your whole purpose here in this first part of task five is to make a choice. You're going to use your mouse and actually click on the picture representing the option that you feel is the easiest to speak about. This is the one that you'll be talking to the teacher and trying to convince her that it's, it's the best way to go. So let's pretend for practice purposes today that we're selecting the late text paint option. We're not going to talk about the wallpaper option at all. So again, let's make this part of the screen just a little bigger so we can all read through it with, with greater ease. Okay, so again, we're clicking with the mouse. We're, we're choosing this selection. This is all during that 60 seconds of prep time. As soon as you make that choice, you are never ever going to use the information from the other choice again. So please don't waste your time looking at any more information about the wallpaper option. You'll never speak about it. So just let that go from your mind. Focus your remaining prep time instead on those bulleted points beneath the picture. They actually provide for you the main ideas that you're going to talk about. So when you start to speak in the next part, the raters are going to look for you to demonstrate four different skill sets. So the first of those skill sets is all about the content details and the coherence or the organization of the piece. So the number of ideas that you will be speaking about to convince the teacher to use latex paint to paint these walls, the number of those ideas has already been given to you. That would be from those four bulleted points beneath the picture. So the, the good news about task five is that the main ideas are pretty much given to you. It's the quality of the ideas that you're going to use your imagination and some creativity to develop. You're going to provide your own examples and supporting details for each of those main points that you have time to talk about. All right, and when we deliver this speech, remember it's a role play, so you'll be speaking directly to the teacher. So we want to make sure that we are introducing the background stating our choice about you know latex paint being the best option and then providing those main points with all of the details we can muster again you're really hoping to persuade the teacher that this would be the best choice to paint those walls so during this 60 seconds of prep time i would encourage you to take some quick notes so you can see again the latex paint option on the screen what i would recommend you try is skim read through those four bulleted points First one you can see says comes in a variety of colors. So on the piece of paper you'll be given during the test, use your paper and pen. I would number your selections so you have a good order that you want to talk about them next. So we're really just paraphrasing the categories, if you will. So we can quickly write down many colors on our note paper there. That section, second option beneath the picture talks about having eight to 10 hours to complete this task. So think of a way in your own vocabulary, keep it simple for yourself for now. Think of a way to summarize that idea, if you will. So if I'm trying to per persuade the teacher that this is a good choice, I'm going to really emphasize to her that it will take no time at all for this project to be finished. It will be done very quickly. So I've captured that idea in my own words there as number two on the note paper. Okay, that third point says messy to apply and easy to remove. Now, if I say to the teacher in my answer, this is a really messy project, she might not want to select this option. So I'm not even going to mention that this is a messy project. I feel that that does not support my position. It's not going to persuade the teacher to agree with me. So I'll ignore the first part of that little detail and instead I'll focus on the second half that says it's really easy to remove any spills. That for me would, would be very convincing. The teacher might say, oh, you've got a point. 
children will make a mess, but at least we can clean it up really easily. So I think that would be a nice supporting main point to deliver there. And that fourth bulleted point talks about how many people can paint all at the same time. So in my mind, I think I can capture that as just emphasizing some of the values that these young children will learn. So things like teamwork and maybe some other ideas that come to my mind as I speak. So again, these four numbered points in my notes, I've taken them loosely from those bulleted points. I'm using those bulleted points just as a guide to get me started, but I'm using my own simple language to capture those ideas on paper. I have to be quick here, right? Because you've only got 60 seconds to read the instructions, make your selection and start thinking about these main ideas. So you should have enough time to at least get these four main points down. The other part, of, or there are four dimensions, if you will, four categories of skills you're being assessed upon. So other than just those content details, another factor that the raters are looking for when you start to talk is all about your vocabulary. So your word choice, we hope, is interesting and descriptive. You want to engage the listener and interest them in what you have to say. Try your very best not to rely just on common everyday words. The more specific and the more interesting the vocab is, the better that your score will be in this area. Whatever words you choose though, they have to be suitable for the task. So keep that in mind. And the other thing to consider is you want a good variety. We don't want to just repeat the same words over and over again. So during this first 60 seconds of prep time, once you've captured those four main points on your piece of paper, you might have time to start filling in some specific details. Those examples are going to come from your own imagination and creativity. So at number one here on the list where it says many colors, sure, we could say to the teacher, the kindergarten kids could paint in yellow, red, blue. Those colors though are very common. They're very everyday usages. If we can impress different, vibrant, more interesting shades of colors here, we'll increase our vocab and also present the teacher with lots of options. So out of the top of my own mind here, I'm thinking of colors like this, turquoise, fuchsia. These go above and beyond just that standard red, yellow, that sort of thing. Turquoise is a bright shade of blue, by the way, and fuchsia is like a pinky purple color. So again, I'm trying my very hardest just to throw in some words to really go for that description if I can. All right. Now that second point there talking about fast time, when I look at the bulleted point on the test screen, it says it would take eight to 10 hours to complete. When I speak and record my answer, I don't want to just read right off the test screen. The, the readers can't very well give me credit for the idea when I'm taking it right from the test question. So instead, I'm going to use that idea of only needing about eight or 10 hours to complete this task. And I'm going to extend that and make it my own. So in my mind, I'm thinking that perhaps we could use two afternoons of the week, maybe a Thursday and Friday afternoon to have the children and maybe the parents come in and help paint these, these classroom walls. That would be a nice efficient use of time. So I wrote down the word efficient in the notes to remind myself to use that vocabulary word as I speak because it's a nice precise and suitable word. All right, I might even as I speak, extend that idea further and say that if we paint on a Thursday, Friday afternoon, we'd have the entire weekend for those classroom walls to fully dry. So we'd be ready just to put the furniture back Monday morning when they come back to class and it won't really inconvenience us at all. So that idea that I just explained in my own words comes from that second bulleted point. So you can see how making a short note like we did on number two here and then extending it into sentence form is going to happen as we speak. All right, that third point is all about the easy cleanup. I don't know much about painting if I'm honest. So off the top of my head, I thought maybe I could mention something about soap water. <laughs> Maybe we have smocks we could put over the children's clothes so that they don't stay in their clothing, that sort of thing. So whatever comes to mind is fine. And under teamwork and values, I, I think teamwork's a good one if I've got time to talk about it. I might mention some other really positive values as well, like responsibility and pride. So again, I can capture some of these details down. Don't worry if you don't have enough time to put specific details throughout your entire list here in your notes in the first prep time. When you start that second uh, amount of time on the test, you will be given another full minute. So you have more time yet to continue to add to the list. Okay, so after the 60 seconds is done, again, your primary goal is to finish at least numbering those main points. Get whatever specific details you can in that amount of time. And when that 60 seconds has finished, 
the computer will move you on to the next part of this task automatically. So you'll notice immediately, first off, the selection you made in the first part is still there. You can see the latex paint option, that has not changed. But what you will notice is there's now a new option here on the left-hand side of the screen. So this one looks like a finger painting project. So up at the top where the timer is, you'll see once again, we've got an additional minute of time. And in that minute, we're going to quickly read over the new instructions at the top. So this is just telling us that the teacher is suggesting another way to decorate the walls. Persuade the teacher that the method you chose is more suitable by comparing the two. So we quickly read that over. We notice the finger painting option, and then we'll spend the remaining part of this 60 seconds of prep time skim reading over those bulleted points about the finger painting. So this is where you're going to add to your notes to add more detail to be convincing. Your whole purpose, keep in mind, here's the notes we started in the first amount of prep time. Your whole purpose in this task is to speak to the teacher and convince them that latex paint is the good option, finger painting is a terrible idea. That's the whole goal here in this task at this stage. So again, use that 60 seconds or what's left of it in the second amount of prep time to look at those four bulleted points under the finger painting option and start thinking about how you might speak about them and add them to your notes. So when I look at that first bulleted point, I see there it says that no special skills are needed to finger paint. Now, I don't want to mention that in my response because if I say that, it would be like I'm supporting the finger painting option. I don't want to say anything to the teacher that portrays finger painting in a positive light because I don't want her to choose that selection. So in my answer, I'm going to ignore that first point. I don't have to talk about everything. I have to be selective, pick and choose what makes sense for my own goal. So I'll move on to that second bulleted point instead. So this one says that the finger painting comes in red, yellow, and blue. And when I look at the first point in my notes, all about latex paint, where I've got all these vibrant colors to choose from, I can quickly mention that finger painting, which I've marked here with FP, I'll just mention that there are far fewer selections in color. So to be persuasive, I think I can portray latex painting in a very positive light. And then I'll also mention some weaknesses with the finger painting option. That's one way to be quite persuasive. And I can continue that pattern throughout the rest of this list, I think. Because that next point under finger painting says it takes three to four days to complete. Remember for the latex paint option, the screen said eight to 10 hours. And our second point in this chart says, we can have this latex paint project done in two afternoons. So after I explain that, I'll also mention that it does take much longer days, as a matter of fact, to complete the finger painting project, which is inconvenient. So again, I've listed that vocab word on my notes just to remind me to try to work it into the response as it's a nice, interesting choice of words. For that or final point there under the finger painting list, it says that it's messy to apply and hard to remove. So this is great news for us. If we say to the teacher, oh, don't use the finger painting, the kids will make a mess. It'll be impossible to get the paint off their fingers and clothes. So I can add that to my notes here under the third point. So I'll present latex painting as a very easy project to clean up. And then I'll mention again how difficult it would be though to take this the paint off of, um, of the children's hands and so on. There's nothing under the finger painting option that talks about values like teamwork. So that's fine, I have more than enough. As a matter of fact, you're only speaking for 60 seconds. And remember, you still need to actually role play the situation. So when we start to speak, we need a few extra seconds to greet the teacher, give the background context and establish which option of painting is the best before we even get to these details. So quite frankly, I don't even know if we'll have time to work all four of these noted points into the response. And you don't have to, all right? The notes you've made is just a guide. When you're speaking and recording your voice, please keep an eye on your timer and be flexible. If all you have time to do is talk about those first three main ideas with some supporting details for each, that's fine. You don't even have to talk about the fourth one. You can just offer a conclusion instead. So it depends a little bit on how much information you speak about. You do want to get close to the one minute mark, but be flexible with your time as well. All right. So again, we've just looked at how we can make notes in the first two minutes we have of the prep time. You get that 60 seconds in part one, you get the additional 60 seconds of prep time in part two. Hopefully now your notes are complete, they're organized, and you know what order you're going to talk about them with. So when that's finished, 
you will be prompted to speak. Remember, you're wearing a headset during the test and that microphone is attached. So you're actually going to hear an automated voice say to you through your headset, it will say, start speaking now. And then you'll be uh, speak out loud and record the voice into that mic. So what I'd like to do to show you what a response might look like for this particular answer is I'm going to play the response for you twice. And the first time we hear the speaker talk, can we please follow along with the notes on the screen? I think some of us are pretty quick at thinking of ideas and noting them down, but a challenging aspect of the task might be then, how do we take those few point formed ideas from a note paper and actually develop the ideas into full sentences as we speak on the test? So this is what I'd like us to really focus on as we listen to the speech the first time. The second time I played the response for you today, I will show you a transcript of the answer so we can really get into the detail and examine the vocab and the sentence structure and things like that. All right, let's listen to our speaker now and we'll see how clearly she follows the notes on the page here. Here we go. Hello, oh, Mrs. Kelly. Thank you so much for redecorating the kindergarten classroom. A fresh coat of paint on the walls will really brighten up the space. Although finger painting could be fun, I think that latex paint is the better choice because it's available in so many vibrant colors like turquoise and fuchsia, which goes beyond the simple red, yellow, and blue that finger painting would allow. I know that latex paint also dries much faster, so I think this would be a more efficient use of classroom time. For instance, the children and the parents could paint together Thursday and Friday afternoon for four hours each time, and then the paints could dry over the weekend. It would take three to four days to cover the walls and handprints, so the classroom would be messy for a longer period of time. Lastly, I'd like to mention that it's easier to clean up spills from latex paint, so it would be the better option considering the children will likely splash paint on the floor or get it on their clothes and hands. Please let me know when painting will begin. I'd love to lend a hand. Okay, so again, in 60 seconds, and that one clocked in right about 59 seconds. So for time, it was almost perfect. She didn't have time to get into that fourth point on the note too, too much. She did mention that the parents and kids could paint together, but she didn't have a lot of time to expand on the values. And that's okay. We might not have time to talk about everything. As long as you're giving a very full and complete answer and organizing it well, that's really what the Raiders are hoping to see from you. Okay, so we've looked at the notes. The second element or, or skill, I guess, that the Raiders are going to, to grade you on is your actual speech presentation. And we call this, sorry, it's the third dimension. We call this listenability. So it has to do, first of all, how clearly you're speaking. So your pronunciation must be understandable. Your volume has to be loud enough to be heard and your speed should be comfortable too. So those would be the basics. Once you've got those things under control, I think a challenging aspect a lot of us might need to practice is to speak from beginning to end with very few pauses and very few interjections. So we want to keep that speech moving from beginning to end as smoothly as we can. We don't want to stop in the middle of every idea to say, um, uh, hmm, right? So again, we have to practice uh, at home. If you can record your speech practice into your cell phone even and play it back and listen, you'll know how well you're doing with that aspect. And it might take some more development at home, which is fine. Your grammar and sentence structure is part of this dimension as well. And it will be easier to assess that in our practice response today when we look at the, at the transcript. So let's do that next then. I'll play this response one final time. We can follow along with the words on the page at the moment. All right, now when you're listening, can you please try to focus on some of the vocabulary choice and just take a quick look at the sentence structure and assess how well the speaker is, is doing with these two skill sets. Um, I'll also mention on the real test, the raters will not have a transcript of your answer. They're just going to listen to that recording. But because we're practicing together, I, I think it's best that we all can see the words on the page. All right, so we'll listen one final time and talk about the vocab and so on. Hi, oh, Mrs. Kelly. Thank you so much for redecorating the kindergarten classroom. A fresh coat of paint on the walls will really brighten up the space. Although finger painting could be fun, I think that latex paint is the better choice because it's available in so many vibrant colors like turquoise and fuchsia, which goes beyond the simple red, yellow, and blue that finger painting would allow. I know that latex paint also dries much faster, so I think this would be a more efficient use of classroom time. For instance, the children and the parents could paint together Thursday and Friday afternoon for four hours each time, and then the paints could dry over the weekend. 
It would take three to four days to cover the walls and handprints, so the classroom would be messy for a longer period of time. Lastly, I'd like to mention that it's easier to clean up spills from latex paint, so it would be the better option considering the children will likely splash paint on the floor or get it on their clothes and hands. Please let me know when painting will begin. I'd love to lend a hand. Okay, so a nice organized response anyway. Um, I'll draw our attention first of all to the structure of the role play. So we were told to speak to the teacher, but we didn't have a name for that teacher. So in this case, please make up a name. Be as specific as you can, and that will help the score. So this speaker just chose the name Mrs. Kelly off the top of her head, which is absolutely fine. So hi, Mrs. Kelly. Uh, she does say about thank you for redecorating the classroom. She mentions also about uh, having a coat of paint on the classroom walls. So what she's doing here in the opening is just introducing the situation. She hasn't even identified the option, but she's giving enough background information by summarizing the instructions on the test screen. So that's what you, you want to do. First off, use your own language though. The second thing we must do is identify the position. So it's very direct here. The speaker says word for word, I think that latex paint is the better choice. So now the raters fully understand which position it is you're going to support throughout the rest of the middle part of the speech. Okay, now we had time, I guess, in this case to offer up the first three main ideas from those notes that we made. And you can see them here in green. The first one is about the many colors. The second is about how quickly that project will be done. And the third is all about how easy it is to clean up any messes. So those three main points are there with plenty of detail in, in between. And at the very end, you'll notice that our speaker has concluded the conversation. So it, it just makes logical sense in this case for the parent to ask the teacher to let her know when, when painting project will start so she can go into the class and help out with this project. So again, it's just a logical way to conclude and it sounds finished, all wrapped up in about a minute of time. Okay, now all of the details that we added into our notes as well, you can see here bolded in black. About half the response is actually providing these supporting details. If you look quickly on the screen right now, you can see some of those words that we noted, like turquoise and fuchsia. And then the Thursday, Friday afternoon, and talking about uh, cleaning up splashes of paint on the floor and so on. So it's important to balance out your response with main points and supporting details to really fully convince, in this case, the teacher to agree with you. Okay, we'll do a quick look at the vocab. So the words highlighted in green here, I think are very suitable for the task, but they also show some interesting word choices as well. So if you look in the first line, we're talking about a fresh coat of paint. We want to brighten up the space. So it's it's somewhat casual language, but it's it's also precise in a way and suitable to be talking to the teacher. Okay, we can see words like vibrant and those turquoise and fuchsia, efficient use of classroom time. Uh, the expression at the bottom about lending a hand is a nice natural way to say that the parent would like to help out. So overall, I think the vocab choice here is interesting, but also suitable. There's no major repetition of words. So this is a good thing. And the last thing we should examine here would be the, the sentence structure too. I didn't notice any grammatical errors, but I did want to look at sentence structure to make sure it wasn't just all short, simple ideas. These blue or turquoise, that's what turquoise looks like. The turquoise words on the screen are conjunctions. They're words that we use to connect ideas together. And at a quick glance, for the most part, we've got a decent variety. I do notice the word so has been used three times. The words and, so, and but tend to be the most common ways, I think, for all of us to connect ideas. I know you'll use these words at least at some point during your answer, and that's okay, provided though we don't only use those words. So by looking at some of the other conjunctions here, we've got words like although, because, for instance, lastly is a good uh, transition there and considering. So I think that the speaker has offered up enough of a variety of sentence structure, and we've also created some complex structures and some compound ideas. So our speaker is demonstrating good control over more complex structures. And that's a really nice way to maximize your score to hopefully earn up into level nine or higher if we can. Okay, so the last category of skills that the raters look at is called task fulfillment. So they want to make sure first off that you've answered the question completely, which our speaker did. We knew what choice she was making. She gave us three main points and details to support all of them. All those details were on topic and very relevant. They per were persuasive in the sense that they were showing how latex paints the best choice, 
finger painting is not a great idea. So this answer's definitely got relevant ideas and it's very complete. The length we already said was almost perfect. It's about 59 seconds, I think. We haven't talked about tone though. So let's quickly look at that. Uh, tone is the emotion that you are conveying through the word choice that you're making. Sometimes you can create emotion with the tone of your voice. I think this speaker actually does a great job of sounding excited and enthusiastic about this project and about wanting to help. She sounded so cheerful as she, she spoke. So that is one thing you can do on your test with your own tone of voice to match what it is you're, you're trying to express. That would count for your score. But more importantly, it's the word choice that we're making. So we've highlighted in yellow though, the beginning and end, just to see how positive, but also respectful, I think, that this whole dialogue is. So first off, our speaker started by thanking the teacher for redecorating the room in the first place and talking about brightening up the space in the beginning there. At the very end, she uses words like, please, you know, please let me know when we'll start. And I'd love to lend a hand. So again, that excitement really comes through in the word choice. So her tone is suitable for this task. The last thing I did want to point out, and I'd encourage you to experiment with this at home. Do you see up at the, the top again in the yellow highlight, the very last part of the yellow highlight says, although finger painting could be fun, and then it gets into, I think that latex paint is the better choice. So quite often when we're presenting our own opinion, and in this case, it's the latex paint option that we're supporting, we want to be very careful that we're not making the, the listener, in this case, the teacher, feel that her idea is a terrible one. So sometimes we offer, we acknowledge the other person's idea first, and that's what we're doing when we say, well, although finger painting could be fun, and then we bring it back to our chosen option. I think latex paint is better because, and then we support with those three main points or four main points, whatever you've got time for. It's just softening our position a little bit to make sure that we're not offending the listener or sounding a little bit bossy. So that's something you can experiment at home with this structure, and it will actually help your tone a little bit too. So when we look at all four of those skill sets that we know we're being assessed upon to earn a score for the response, really, really quickly, if you again, look at the bulleted points there on the right hand side, I would say that this response has checked most of these boxes to the best of the speaker's ability. All right, now I can't give you a score for this response. It's not been professionally rated and it wouldn't be fair to rate it professionally because this response was not created in a testing center under authentic test conditions. So we wouldn't rate it for that result, but I am hoping that at least the strategies that we've used to create this response, first by reading the question, making some notes, and then using those notes to guide the answer. That's the takeaway from today's uh, session here. So I'm hoping that at least it gives you some ideas about how you might want to approach this question, both as you're practicing at home and again, when you actually answer the question on your test. So to wrap up your speaking strategies for task five in particular, remember that you've got two parts to complete. So the first thing you do is quickly, quickly make your choice by clicking on the picture you want to talk about next. And you're going to write down the main ideas that are most supportive of your option. Remember, these ideas come right from the bulleted points on the computer screen anyway. So you don't have to worry too, too much about being creative here. When you write your notes though, just use your own vocabulary so that you're not copying right from the testing screen. Keep your notes short. You won't have a lot of time. So a couple of words should be enough just to at least keep you on track with what the ideas are. Okay, now again, in this first 60 seconds of prep time, I'm really hoping you've got some time to add a couple of specific details onto your note paper. This is where the details come from your own imagination. You are extending those points further and trying to be persuasive if you can. In that second part, remember you've got a new option presented and also a full minute to get familiar with it and add more details to the notes. You're still supporting that first choice you've made, but you have to look at how that second choice there is a weak idea. So that's one technique to be persuasive. So by the end of the, the two minutes there of prep time, you will be prompted to speak. Remember, you're aiming to speak for close to one minute. Remember to role play the situation. So greet your listener, make up their name, because that's a lot more specific and interesting. In this case, our speaker addressed the teacher as Mrs. Kelly. She made that name up. Remember to provide the background information first. So you're pretty much summarizing the scenario from the test. All right. In this case, it was a matter of explaining that we're redecorating those kindergarten classroom walls by adding a fresh coat of paint. 
So that was established first in our, in our response today. As soon as you've introduced that topic, you're going to immediately identify the option you've selected. So our speaker did say, I think latex painting is the better option. So we need to have that done first. Then you're going to present the main ideas from your notes. You've numbered them. So hopefully you know which order you'll present them in. Every time you deliver a main idea, you're going to give at least one, maybe even two supporting details and examples. It depends on how much time is left on the clock. And you'll do that for every main point you, you offer up. Towards the end, save yourself even five seconds if you can, just to offer up that concluding statement so that the conversation sounds finished. In this case, it was relatively easy for the speaker to simply say, let me know when we start painting because I'd love to lend a hand. So it was a natural way to conclude. So you, you will need to decide how to finish off your conversation. It has to make sense for the test question you're answering, but it's usually something that comes quite naturally to you as it's a conversation. So hopefully that won't be too challenging for you. Okay, and aside from your content and structure, as we speak, we try our very best to use interesting, precise vocabulary words and to showcase a nice variety. And the same goes for sentence structure. We should be speaking in complete sentences for a test to demonstrate our grasp of the English language, but the more complexity you can show, the better. So aim for longer, more complex sentences or compound sentences if you can. It's okay to have a couple of short, simple ideas, but you really want to practice at home, looking at ways to connect those short, simple ideas together so that you do have a better control over complexity, I guess, when you speak. All right, and again, we talked about our speech delivery. This comes with practice at home, especially if English is not your first language. So it's a matter of uh, making sure that our pronunciation is clear and hopefully we're not pausing or interjecting too often as that sometimes does distract the response. All right, so I'm going to come back to all of you now. I'll see if we've got any questions for uh, that I can answer for you and we'll go from there. Hello, uh, we don't have any questions yet. Um, I'm just going to wait a couple seconds and see that if somebody has um, any questions specifically, but I did have a question for you from previous. Um, well, it's not a question. It's more like a little bit of confusion where um, test takers are, are finding it hard to make a choice in the beginning and then have, a, have to defend it from a completely other um, comparison in the next. Yeah, and that's a very fair point. And like you just said, Ashwadi, I do a lot of webinars. And when we talk about task five, I get that question just about every time I deliver the webinar. And it's a very fair question to ask. I guess I can say from, from a speaking standpoint, remember the CELPIP is designed to assess your ability to speak in day-to-day -day situations. So that first amount of prep time, that first screen where you're given two choices, this is your opportunity to make a choice for yourself. So you're looking at both options, pros and cons of both, and you're deciding for yourself what would be best for you. So you make that choice. When you're moved forward to the second screen though, this is where the, the listener, and in today's example, it was the teacher, she then presents you with her own opinion. And that's part of daily communication too, is looking at, well, this is what I think was best, mm, but now I've got someone else who is throwing me a completely different idea. And on the spot, we sometimes have to make a, a snap judgment and decision. And how can we tactfully then have a conversation with this person to persuade them that we still have a very valid idea and we'd like to go ahead with it. So you are, you're being persuasive, you're comparing information in both parts, but you're uh, looking at it from a different lens, I guess, in each. Yeah, that's sort of from the realistic test taker standpoint. When you think about it from just test strategies, I'm hoping when you think back to that slide where I X'd out that little child with the uh, wallpaper, I did that on purpose today to just to try to really emphasize that in that first selection, whatever you, you don't choose, just discard it, just ignore it. It's never going to come back on the test. So that when you do move into that next section and you see those two choices, that's what you're going to focus on. And that's where the ideas from the notes will come from. So yeah, I hope that helps a little bit. It is somewhat of a complicated question. It's the only one on all of self speaking that is divided into two parts, but I hope at least that helps you uh, understand sort of where the information is coming from. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have another question from Wayne. Um, I, found some, I found some tasks in Taskify easy while I found some difficult. What should I do with this? 
Uh, so you're, you're, I'm assuming Wayne has done practice with um, other practice tests or maybe some of our webinars. So you've seen different questions for task five. I guess it's a valid point to make as well. We're all different with our interests and our learning styles. So it makes sense that certain questions, like if Ashwadi and I were doing the test right now, I might find one question pretty easy and she might find the same question pretty difficult and vice versa. So yeah, that's part of just the, the learning curve, I guess. There's, I can't really answer that question for you because I don't know what it is about the question that is making it hard for you. But what I can recommend is that when you approach your practice before you do the cell pip test, if you can use the exact same strategies in the exact same order and apply them to every question that you're working through, it's going to hopefully alleviate some of the challenges that you're facing. So again, like in today where we looked at, okay, what am I doing in that first minute? Just making a choice and I'm identifying categories. Of, of main ideas. And I'm taking those right from the testing screen anyway. So regardless of if you really like the options on the test and find them easy or not, it's this, the skill is, has not changed. You're still sort of summarizing those bulleted points and noting them down on paper. So we should still be able to do that, whether we love the idea or not. Um, the creativity or the details as well that come from your imagination, that might be easier for you with a more focus on vocabulary development. I find that people who struggle to come up with ideas in any question, let alone task five, sometimes struggle just with, with finding the words to speak in such a short amount of time. So Wayne, that might be something to consider if certain questions are difficult. It might be just a matter of really focusing on vocab development overall. But yeah, at least apply the same strategies. You can't predict what the question will be. If you're lucky, you'll get one that's easy for you, but that might not be the case come test day. So you'll have to rely on the strategies and the routines you've established during your study time and apply them to the same questions, or to the questions rather on the test. Thank you. Um, another question from Anu. Can I add some details from my site while comparing uh, yes. relevance to choices? Yeah, absolutely. So Anu, when we added in specific details, so we I think we bulleted them in the notes is the way we did it today. Those details do come from your own imagination. If you've got some other main points as well, and I didn't address this in today's session because I did. we've had so much to talk about, I didn't feel the need. But if you've got some other main ideas that are going to strongly support the choice you've made, it's absolutely fine to add those in for sure. So again, if you think of the four points that we summarized on our notes, we talked about lots of colors, a fast project, easy to clean, and lots of values being learned. We took those from the test instructions. If for some reason you still have 15 seconds left on the clock when you're talking, you're going to have to come up with your own idea anyway. So as long as your main point and whatever example you have to support it is relevant and actually answers the test question, by all means, add one in. Uh, just focus the answer and make sure you're talking for the whole time. So yeah, be creative, but realistic, I guess, too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Good question, though. I like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I liked it, too. Okay. Um, here's another question from Chaitanya. If we speak for more than a minute, will it affect the scores? Yeah, you know, the recording is going to automatically stop at 60 seconds anyway. So if you're not finished, you're going to get cut off in the middle of your sentence and the raters will simply not hear the rest of the idea. It's, it's very common, I'll reassure our listeners, it's super common for most of us to get cut off, at least at some point on the speaking test. We're not looking for perfection. I mean, it's so challenging for any of us to speak off the top of our minds and get to the 60 second mark perfectly. That's a really difficult thing to do. So provided you've given a really full answer and you were just in the process of concluding and it was very obvious to the raters that you were in the middle of that concluding statement, it's not going to affect your score whatsoever that you didn't get to finish your goodbye in task five. So don't worry too, too much. It would be a problem though, if you are trying to develop another main point and you get cut off, then yes, that would actually negatively affect your score because you would not have completely finished then the answer. But yeah, on average, you, you should have time for three main points with supporting details on average, all right? Um, like our speaker did today. So, so aim for that, try to conclude. If you don't get the conclusion in, it's not the end of the world. It might affect your score teeny tiny amount. It wouldn't be a big problem. So don't worry too much about that. <laughs> okay, another question from Wayne. Are subjunct subjunct subjunctive mood sentences recommended in order to make the response more sophisticated? 
Yeah, so again, one of the ways to maximize your score and your sentence structure is always evaluated under the listenability factor. This is the same skill set uh, that counts your public speaking, believe it or not. <laughs> they're they're limped, or, uh, linked together in the same thing. So to demonstrate more complexity and sophistication, you are looking for more complexity as well. So using your um, subordinate conjunctions, words like although, because, using conjunctive adverbs like moreover, furthermore, if it makes sense, those would be definitely ways to create a more sophisticated response. I will say though, the tone of our piece is important. So if, for example, if I'm pretending I was the speaker, a parent talking to the teacher today, I would assume that I've got a pretty good relationship with that teacher if I'm sharing an idea and wanting to come in and help. So I myself would not choose overly formal words like furthermore and moreover and consequently. Those are wonderful complex words, but I don't really think they fit the tone of the dialogue at hand today. So there's a lot to factor in there, isn't there, Wayne? We have to choose words that demonstrate strong control over the English language and grammar and sentence structure but you always have to consider your audience. Does it make sense that I'm using these overly formal words to talk to a teacher that I know quite well, for example? So it's a little bit of a, of a judgment call on your end, uh, but overall you can still create these complex sentences with more common joining words such as because and although, you know, and even though and, and things like that as well. So yeah, good question. I hope my answer made sense. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have another question from Amy. Hi, Brandy. What advice can you give if English is the second language for the test taker? I find it difficult sometimes to find a word to describe some things to talk about on the speaking test. Okay, so I'm just trying to think about task five in particular. So the good news, Amy, about task five is that the main details you're going to put into your answer are already summarized on the testing screen for you. Remember those bulleted points? Ideally, to maximize your score, we're hoping you've got the ability to summarize and paraphrase those ideas in your own words. So a great example was the testing screen today said, we can finish the latex painting in four to, or sorry, eight to 10 hours, I think it was. And when we spoke about that, instead of reading from the screen, we said, oh, we can complete this project in two different afternoons, you know, and then the, the classroom would dry over the weekend and so on. If for whatever reason you find you don't have the vocabulary language to summarize those details, if worse came to worse and you read it off the screen, it's not going to do wonders for your vocabulary, but it's still going to earn you points for your content and then your support and your organization. So it's a bit of good news, bad news, right? I know vocabulary is tough for, for people whose language isn't, or your first language maybe isn't English, it's a bit tougher and I, I recognize that. But remember that vocabulary is only one of the four dimensions that you're being assessed upon. So you might not do as well in the vocab if you're relying more heavily on words right from the testing screen to guide you, but you can still earn some really strong points in your speech delivery. You can still earn some good points in your sentence construction, in the way you've organized that answer. You're greeting the teacher, you're establishing the situation, you're presenting your main points, you've got your conclusion. There are still ways that you will uh, earn marks towards the final answer. So always uh, capitalize on what you can do well and try not to stress so much on what's difficult for you during the test. All right, uh, again, we all have to recognize that we have some strengths and weaknesses. So that's the best advice I can give there, I guess. <laughs> okay, thank you, Brandy. I think those are all the questions we have relevant to task five. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, you can either ask us in the chat or if the chat has ended, you can answer it, ask us in the comments and uh, either I or Brandy will answer it for you. But thank you so much for joining us, Brandy, with yet another wonderful lesson. Really happy to have you with us. Excellent. Thanks for having me back and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was Brandy with another great session. Thank you for joining us and subscribing to our channel, you guys. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anybody else you think might find it useful. Please also leave suggestions on what you'd like to see more on self Live. Live. Um, a lot of the episodes we produce, especially the one today, are from suggestions we received from you all. So please feel free to drop in your suggestions, um, either in the chat, in the comments on YouTube, or you can also send in your suggestions or just connect with us on our Instagram account, self Test Official. A lot of our updates go on there first. 
So do follow us uh, to stay up to date. I haven't forgotten our trivia question. Um, can you name the highest peak in Canada? And I don't think anybody answered that question. So I'm just going to answer it for you. It's Mount Logan in Yukon. And that's it for today. Our next episode will be on May 17th. Do join us. But until then, please take care and stay safe. Bye.